you know, Missouri historically like, is not an easy place to win at it, for a bunch of reasons. The conference, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it can be a tough job, but Coach Drink has obviously been great and has changed the entire culture around that place. What was... I guess like when when Coach Drink got there, what was what was it that you noticed about him that made you kind of believe that he could he could be the guy to, to turn it around? When we first showed up, so Drink showed up, I showed up. It was just like a mix and match team, man. It was like we had some five six years, you know, that were super loyal to Coach Odom and um, mm-hmm. like Drink kind of had his first class, but you know, I, you know, I wasn't even his real recruited quarterback, right? So. Um, I, th- I think like it was just a mix and match team for a couple years um, and just the culture wasn't really there like the the buy-in and, and all of that into into you know what we're doing what coach drink is doing and it just took a couple years man and you know the guys who stuck it out and the guys who really bought in and you know and coach drink had the opportunity to recruit and bring his dudes in and like I mean to be honest like the biggest difference has just been like the buy-in from the players like we truly believe in the coaching staff we're a real team now and like just the culture has just taken a full 180 so welcome into the next up podcast i'm your host adam brenneman appreciate everyone tuning in today it's championship weekend in college football it does not get any better we got some huge games this weekend i mean just massive massive games we got the sec championship pac 12 oregon washington that game will be a, a de facto playoff game playing game for those two teams we got the big 10 championship with two great defenses Iowa and Michigan. So much good football. The guy I have this week on the podcast, really one of the surprises in college football this year. You know, Missouri was predicted to be second to last in the SEC this season above above just Vanderbilt. And now they're the third best team in the SEC. They've been impressive. A big reason why is their quarterback, Brady Cook. He's played lights out football. He's taking care of the ball. He's made big plays. He is a, a special player at that position. I've gotten to know him a little bit. We have a, a, a mutual, some mutual friends. My agent when I was playing is, is now his agent. I've heard a lot about him and finally got the chance to have him on the podcast and what a story he has of being a guy who dreamed to go to Missouri, now playing really good football for his hometown school. I has some great advice on overcoming adversity and, and his thoughts around NIL and, and, and his head coach, Elijah Drinkowitz. Talked a lot about things that uh, that you know, kind of move the needle with me and, and when it comes to overcoming adversity and toughness and words of advice to live by. So I think you guys will really enjoy this episode. Before we get to it, please subscribe to this channel. Uh, if you're listening on audio, uh, give us a rating, share it, like it on social media, follow us on social media anywhere at Next Up With Adam on social media. On Instagram, it's Next Up With AB. And then my personal social media uh, at Adam Brenneman and at Adam Brenneman 81. So show us support there. And you guys will hear some from our sponsors today. Any support you get the sponsors helps me, helps the show. And allows us to keep doing this at a high level. So without further ado, Brady Cook. Next up. What's up, guys? It's Adam Brenneman. It's now holiday season. You guys are looking for gifts. I'm telling you right now, check out our merch store. We have super high quality merch. My favorite is this college football tee. If you're a college football fan, you need this thing. We have college basketball tees, tons of merch for college sports fans. Use the code ADAMB15 for 15% off at checkout. Go get some college football merch and check out our other styles today. How you doing, man? Appreciate you coming on. I'm excited too. I've been wanting to have you on for a while. It's been, I've been trying to coordinate schedule. I know it's my schedule, your schedule, but uh, you're having a heck of a season. Man, I'm excited to talk to you. Yeah, dude, thank you. Um, man, it was it was a cool year. So we're just kind of winding down a little bit and uh, taking a deep breath. So, but yeah, it's, it was a special year, man. What What's this time? I mean, I know, but what get for the fans? Like regular season ends. I feel like it's a, a it's kind of a strange time as, as a as a football player. Like you're waiting on the bowl game. What What are you doing these couple weeks now? Honestly, like this is the best week, man. Because like you don't have an op- you don't have an opponent to prepare for, right? Um, yeah. You just finished, you know, ten, eleven weeks, twelve weeks. Um, so you can just take a deep breath and like just chill, um, get your body right, and um, we're all excited for the bowl game. And um, yeah, we'll know Sunday, so uh, we're excited. And um, yeah, it's it's a good time period. What uh? So I, I want to start and get under understand more of your whole story because like you've really come on the scene like this year. I mean, I know you've been starting there for a while, but um, everyone's starting to hear your name now. But I don't think a lot of people know your background. So like, let's start with yeah. your recruiting process. How did that process go? Uh, I know you grew up in Missouri, right? And, and always kind of dreamed of going to Missouri. Uh, for at least that's what I've read. So tell tell us the story in your version. Yeah, you know my recruiting process was. Uh pretty underwhelming, I'd say. Um, so I, <laughs> I, 
I grew up in St. Louis, um, and I was a Mizzou fan, right? So come up to games on Saturday, you know, that's where I learned what college football was. You know, my earliest memories of college football was Mizzou, right? And yeah. I had the chance to see Chase Daniel, you know, Blaine Gabbert, James Franklin, Drew Locke, and, like, that's who I watched. You know, that's where I watched football. Um, so, you know, my biggest goal in high school was let's go get an offer from Mizzou. Um, and then I was able to do that the end of my sophomore year in high school. Um, and I waited a couple months, um, tried talking to a couple other schools. Um, but ultimately I was like, I don't know why I'm waiting. You know, all, all I'm doing by waiting is giving, <laughs> you know, another quarterback the chance to take my spot. So yeah. I committed. Um, and once I committed, uh, at the beginning of my junior year, I don't think I spoke to another coach. Um, so that was, yeah. that was it for the recruiting process. And then two weeks before signing day, um, cause I committed to coach Odom, um, who's now the head coach at UNLV. Yeah. Um, so I committed to coach Odom two weeks before signing day. Uh, he was fired. Right. Um, so, you know, for a second yeah. there, uh, I'm thinking, you know, holy crap, like, you know, I've been committed for two years to this, to this school and this coach and two weeks before signing day, you know, he's no longer the coach and I haven't talked to any other schools. Uh, so I was super worried. Yeah. Um, but ultimately just like, trusted that you know it was going to work out and trusted in coach drink so it ended up working out today's episode is brought to you by ekron athletics listen you guys know i was an injury prone player during my playing career felt like i was hurt having surgery every other season looking back on it i wasn't recovering the right way so now in my post playing career i made it a mission to figure out how to recover best and that's when i found ekron athletics their b37s percussion massage gun this thing right here has changed the way i recover after big workouts i wish i had this thing when i was playing it was named the best overall massage gun by gq sports illustrator and other trusted public I'm telling you, every player and athlete out there should be using this thing to recover after workouts and games and to get loose before games and practices. And even if you're not playing sports and using it before the gym and after the gym, I use it when I'm sitting at home watching college football every Saturday. I mean, this thing is beautiful. I love it. I take it with me everywhere I go, even on the road when I travel. Oh, and the B37S massage gun is not just about a quick fix. It's got a long battery life and it comes with a lifetime warranty guaranteeing this thing lasts much longer than my football career did. Whether you're a current an athlete, a former athlete, or just an everyday person trying to stay in shape, you need to try the B37S percussion gun from Ekron Athletics. Go to EkronAthletics.com today and start recovering faster and moving easier. That's Ekron Athletics and use promo code NEXTUP for 25% off your purchase. That's E-K-R-I-N Athletics.com with promo code NEXTUP for 25% off your purchase. That's such a part of the, the recruiting process in the game, especially nowadays, that I think fans don't always think about is like... You know, everyone tells you to not pick a school because of the coaches, right? You hear that. I mean, how much do people tell you that as advice, like when you're in high school? Like, don't don't choose it because of the coaches because, like, you'll ne you never know if they'll be there. But the reality is that you really do pick a school because of the coaches. Like, like you you, you got to pick it because of the coaches. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's, like, so many players now, especially with, like, you know, you get recruited also by position coaches. And your position coach, the chance of your position coach being there for four years or five years is, like, no. that never happens. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, I mean, it had it had it had it had to be such a like such an eye opening process when like you, you have a coaching change right in the middle of your of your recruitment. Right. Yeah. I mean, it was, and uh, you know, I had to sit down and basically say, you know, I have two weeks to make a decision, um, and I can try yeah. to reach out at this point and see if there's more options. And yeah. uh, you know, Coach Odom was obviously, <laughs> yeah. you know, he was going to Arkansas as the DC, um, so I don't know if there's much yeah. opportunity there. And I was like shoot, you know, I committed to Mizzou. Um, I want to play at Mizzou. I'm going to stick to it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so you, you, you get the, you get the Missouri. I love asking this question, especially to quarterbacks. I, I asked our, uh, my buddy, Will Howard the other day, I had him on the podcast. Um, yeah. What was your moment when you got the Mizzou? That was your welcome to college football moment. Like where, you know, everyone has it. Like I remember mine in my career where you're like, Oh, this, sure. this is big time college football. Yeah, so I'd say there's there's two there's two moments. Uh, the first one was like that first like hard Friday morning six a.m. workout where like they've got you like in different like competitions and stuff. So like we were doing a competition uh, like the rope pull, uh, just tug of war, um, and like I think my foot slipped on one side of the tug of war and like I fell down and I came <laughs> lost. 
Um, and Coach Drink <laughs> lost it on me. I mean, like, he lost it on me. He's, like, you know, yelling at me, this and that. And, like, I'm just looking around. It's, like, my first, like, workout. It's all these, like, seniors, you know what I'm saying, dudes in the SEC. I'm, like, yeah. man, like, I got, a, I got a long way to go. <laughs> and then – uh, the second, the second one was probably the first spring practice. So I enrolled early to do spring ball, um, and it was my first college practice ever. Yeah. It was my first rep in seven on seven ever. So my first like real live rep, um, and I think I threw yeah. a flat route. I think I think I threw a flat route into like a cloud corner or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't know what I was looking at. Um, and I threw yeah. like a, just a straight arrow route right into a flat into a, a cover two corner and like. The tight end got like it destroyed. Picked off? Uh, not picked off, oh. but like my tight end just got totally like smoked. And like right behind, right behind, <laughs> you know, the head coach is always right behind the quarterback. Um, and I can just, yeah. I, I hear him just start going off. I'm like, man, like this is, <laughs> this is a rough start to the journey right here. <laughs> but, uh, As a quarterback, what's worse? Is it, is it throwing an interception? Or is it like absolutely getting your receiver killed across the middle of the field or like throwing into a cloud corner and you know that like that that guy got hurt? I mean, throwing a pick has to be worse, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, both are tough. Um, throwing an interception is probably the worst, uh, straight up. Because, you know, in a way, like if your receiver gets killed, you can still justify it like, okay, like it's football, right? It's a physical yeah. game. Like, we're all going to get hit a little bit. Yeah. Um, now, depending on the severity of the hit, obviously, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it changes. Definitely, definitely. What what, uh, what what's been the, your favorite moment of your career so far in Missouri? Mm. Yeah, I think that's easy, man. It was uh, week three K State this year. Um, yeah. Seeing because up to that moment, um, honestly, up to up until the the field goal went in versus K State. Like, there just was not a lot of good mojo here. Um, there wasn't a lot of belief, really. Um, and, like, yeah. from that moment on, like, when Nevis hit that, you know, 61-yarder, that's when yeah. you know, that's when things started to change. That's when we got momentum. And, man, I'll never forget that moment for sure. Yeah. What – what? Uh, I mean, talk. speaking of, like, changing the mojo around that program and, and – you know, Missouri historically, like, it's not an easy place to win at it, for a bunch of reasons. The conference, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it can be a tough job, but Coach Drink has obviously been great and has changed the entire culture around that place. What was, I guess, like when, when Coach Drink got there, what was, what was it that you noticed about him that made you kind of believe that he could, he could be the guy to, to turn it around? Yeah, you know, when he, when we first showed up, so Drink showed up, I showed up it was just like a mix and match team, man. It was like, we had some five, six years, you know, that were super loyal to coach Odom and um, mm -hmm. like drink kind of had his first class, but you know, I, you know, I wasn't even his real recruited quarterback. Right. So um, yeah. I, th I think like it was just a mix and match team for a couple years. Um, and just the culture wasn't really there. Like the, the buy-in and, and all of that and to, into, you know, what we're doing, what coach drink is doing. And it just took a couple of years, man. Um, and you know, the guys who stuck it out and the guys who really bought in and, you know, and coach drink had the opportunity to recruit and bring his dudes in. And like, I mean, to be honest, like the biggest difference has just been like the buy-in from the players. Like we truly believe in the coaching staff. We're a real team now. And like, just the culture has just taken a full 180. So what, what, what's your funniest coach drink story? Oh man. I'm telling you, there's there's a lot. Um, <laughs> man, I figured. Um, he does so many like different quirky things, like and like it all plays a role in like who he is and who he is as a coach. But like for example, like, I'll just give you a quick example. Um, like every Friday uh, before I like fast Friday, like run through practice game weeks. Uh, like 30 minutes before the team meeting, you know he has this like drum. It's called the war drum. And it sits outside the team meeting room and he just, he just bangs it for 30 minutes straight on rhythm. And like, he'll, he'll yell out like war drum. And like, I'm talking for 30 minutes straight, he'll bang on that thing. And then it leads into the team meeting. So everyone gets in their seats. The, the drum is still going, you know, he's still, still singing the war drum. And then like, we'll all start the whole team will start clapping on beat. And then, you know, that'll start our Friday. So like, 
he does a bunch of different things like that. And like, I mean, the dude's hilarious. Like, I'm sure you've seen like uh, some social media of him or whatever. But I mean, he's yeah. a character for sure. He's he's setting the tempo right for the t- for the team meeting. I love it oh, yeah, <laughs> with, yeah. with the wardrobe. He what did did, did he? Did you see the clip of him going up to the to the Tennessee coach and saying we stand on business after the game? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I uh, oh yeah, I saw it in person in person for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I was watching because um, you know he, he told the captains like this week, like man, like we're we're standing on this thing. It was personal. Um, and, you know, yeah. you know he, he's going to show them. So yeah, we we were definitely tuned in to see that for sure. <laughs> That was such a that was such a gangster clip when I saw it. I was yeah, like, "What a I boss know. this guy is!" So, beginning of the season too. I mean, I remember when I was doing my whole like preseason thing at like SEC media days. I mean, you guys were picked to finish second to last to only Vanderbilt, the SEC, um, yeah, and then to finish top three in the entire conference. Going to play in a New Year's Six bowl game. What you know. Uh, I guess, were you aware of kind of like the, the doubters and what people thought this season was going to be like? And did you think that gave you guys kind of a chip on your shoulder to prove everyone wrong? Yeah. I mean, since I've been here, like my four seasons here, uh, preseason throughout the season, like no one really thought we were a team. Right? <laughs> you know, I mean, like we didn't, yeah. we didn't get respect. Yeah. Like we knew we didn't get respect. Um, and like for three years, like we didn't give people a reason to give us respect. Right. So. I mean, and it was the same story going into this year. Uh, we all knew it. Yeah. Um, and I, I think our program kind of got used to it for a little bit. Like, everyone was like, right, yeah, second to last in the SEC. Like, yeah, yeah I mean, what else What else did, did we expect? But, um, yeah. man, yeah, I mean, it was a chip on our shoulder. Like, um, you may, may or may not have seen this. Like, our team basically adopted the motto STP, which means something to prove. Um, and just like you said, proving people yeah. wrong, proving us right. So I think it goes both ways. Um, and man, yeah, I mean, it's been huge because people have really bought into STP, something to prove. Like we live by that. And uh, man, it's been special to uh, prove, yeah. prove those people wrong and prove us right. A really cool part of your team, when I look at it, is a large core of your your group is home state Missouri guys, especially the, your, your trio on offense. You, yeah. Luther, Cody, all St. Louis guys. You know, what's it mean to you to like have that kind of success at your home school and go out there, especially, you know, with your boys who are, you know, all from the same area? Before we get back to the pod, we got to talk about something super important. Fellas, I know you guys are using those sharp razors to shave your face and to shave your manly areas. I'm telling you, stop doing it. I was in your shoes. I was using regular razors, and then I found Manscaped. Manscaped sponsored the pod a few months ago, and I started using their products. It has changed my routine and my life completely. I told you before about Smooth Sack Summer. It's now Fresh Ball Fall. You need fresh balls in the fall. There's no excuse not to be fresh. Let's be honest. We both know we go in a little bit nervous to our manly grooming routine with the regular old razors we use, but with Manscaped, It takes away any feeling of being nervous. I use the lawnmower 4.0 when I'm doing my manly grooming. I use the beard hedger for my face and the reviews have been immaculate. Just take my word on that one, boys. So I'm telling you, if you're using regular old razors, stop and use Manscaped. And you can go to manscaped.com and use my code ADAMB for 20% off and free shipping. I'm telling you guys, it's fresh ball fall. Using Manscaped will change your routine, change your manlyhood, and change your life. Manscaped.com, promo code ADAMB for 20% off and free shipping. Yeah, I mean, it's special. Like, I think it has a different feel to it than if we all went our own separate ways and played out of state. Like, yeah. because we all take we yeah. all take a lot of pride in, like, making people back home proud and you know, everyone back home is pretty much a Mizzou fan. Right. So you kind of get this Columbia uh, sense of pride. You get, you know, you're, you feel backed and supported by St. Louis and you feel like you're putting on for your hometown. And we had the chance to play a game in St. Louis, you know? So um, it's been really special. And just like knowing that other dudes around you on the team are from the same area, you know, playing for the same reasons, you know, with the same group of people supporting them. I mean, it's been super cool. Yeah. What, what do you, what do you think is, you know, last year, I think you guys were like six and seven or something like that. Um, 
what was the moment between last season and this season? Was there a moment where it flipped? And I mean, I know, I know you said the week three thing, but what, was there anything like in the off season or where, where you kind of said like, oh, like I think this culture is coming together now? Yeah. You know, honestly, um, I don't think it really flipped until fall camp. Um, you until know, we got, through, we got through uh, spring ball um, and like – yeah. You no, know, it, it was spring ball, right? So we had a new OC, had some new guys, you know, just trying to get everybody acclimated together. And, you know, it is what it is. And then we went through the summer, which was solid. But then, then like fall camp, like it was a really, really intense fall camp, like offense and defense. Yeah. And like we realized how good our defense was. Defense realized how good we were. Um, everybody practiced hard. Like we were making explosive plays. Like there wasn't people showing up. To fall camp saying, man, I'm so tired. Like, you know, we don't want to do yeah. this. Like people were balling out. Um, and like, I, I, I I'll say this, like fall camp gave our team like a lot of confidence for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Switching gears a little bit. I wanted to ask about NIL. I mean, as an SEC quarterback, I know not in today's football, like NIL is a big part of it. Well, what's, what's your experience been like with NIL and, you know, just all that goes into it, balancing everything, you know, being able to make money. I mean, there, there's a, there's a lot that's changed since when I was playing, you know, how, how's it been? Yeah. I mean, so when I first came to college, obviously NIL wasn't a thing. Um, and yeah. man, it's just been like a huge, a huge change to like college football in general. Like uh, it just feels weight. It feels like a business more than ever, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. Obviously it's been super uh, incredible and I'm very blessed to you know, be <laughs> because, you know, me and like everybody yeah. around me on my team, like we have the opportunity to like, you know, make substantial money and like, you know, start our lives, yeah. like, because obviously the NFL isn't guaranteed. So, like, everyone is, player-wise, is super, super excited about that. Um, and, yeah, time, that's definitely that's definitely a, a big part of it. Um, you've got to choose, yeah. and you've got to find a way during the season to, I mean, it's either going to be you're going to watch a little bit of extra tape or you're going to go, you know, film a promo for, you know, uh, Joe Schmo down the yeah. road. So, I think it's, there's a lot of balance that goes into it, um, for sure. Um, but if you yeah. can find the right balance, I mean, it's, it's a blessing. What, what's been your favorite NIL deal you've done? Uh, I'd say my favorite's probably been with Emo's Pizza in St. Louis. Um, are you familiar with Emo's Pizza? Free. I'm not, but is it like, what, you get like free pizza for life in this deal? <laughs> it's also basically, um, Emo's is like a St. Louis style pizza and like it's big in St. Louis. Got like, it. It's only in St. Louis, really. Um, and yeah, I yeah. mean, that's, that's my favorite pizza. So like, uh, growing up eating it, that, then getting an NIL deal with, um, that was, that was pretty cool. And, <laughs> uh, you know, it's worked out for on both sides too. So that was definitely cool. Yeah. What, um, you know, I, I talk a lot on my show and a lot of the content I do about like overcoming adversity and the things that people go through in their careers and coming out, you know, out of it. What, what's been, what was the toughest moment of your career and how'd you, how'd you overcome it? Yeah. Um, the toughest moment of my career was definitely Kansas state in 2022. So last season, um, yeah, it was, uh, so week three of that year, right after I won the job, um, actually it was week two, sorry, week two. So it was the game after my first start ever just won the job. You know, I'm feeling like, man, like I finally did it. My dream is coming true. Right. Yeah. Um, and we go to Kansas state. Um, and I mean, we just get our butts whooped. Um, and I yeah. tore my, I tore my right throwing shoulder, uh, labrum, uh, halfway through the game on a quarterback draw, um, played through it. Um, but I mean, I walked away from that game thinking like, man, like that quickly, you know, I just won the job and, yeah. um, you know, I'm gonna have to deal with a torn labrum in my throwing shoulder the rest of the year. If I, you know, decide to play and like, you know, that's that, that quickly, you know, I went from on top of the world to, uh, you know, in, in a, in a bad place. So, uh, it was really, really tough. Um, but you know, we, uh, just got right back on the horse and, you know, made it through. So what, what, what do you think it was that got you through that? Is it, is it, you know, 
I guess like what 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 do you lean on during during the tough times? Yeah, I mean, I think honestly, what got me through it is just my passion to uh, put on for Mizzou, my dream school, and then two, yeah. I mean, really, my family, my parents, my sisters. Um, I mean, my family has supported me in every way they can uh, to get me here to help me yeah. succeed. You know, my parents come to every single game. You know, they're always checking in on me and like. Um, this was their year to have fun. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking week two with my torn labor. I'm like, they've all been waiting for this moment too. You know what I'm saying? They, they want to have fun this year. They want to yeah. you know, see me succeed. Yeah. So I'm like, um, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't let them down. Um, I knew that, you know, if I wasn't out there playing for Mizzou, uh, it would just have a different feel. And um, I wanted to put on for, you know, my family. Yeah, I feel like that, that is the coolest part of success is being able to bring your bring your family um, coming along for the ride with you, right? Like that's yeah. always that's always the best part, right? Um, what what's the uh, what's the best advice you've ever received? Hmm, that's a good one. Um, hmm, mm, 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 mm. Um, I really like this one from my dad. He always told me this. He said, uh, always give people the benefit of the doubt. Um, yeah. and then, uh, kindness and calmness always get you farther with people. So, um, you never know what somebody's going through. Um, you know, it could be their worst day. Right. So, uh, give people the benefit of the doubt when you can. And, uh, you know, just remember kindness and calmness gets you farther with people. It's, it's never the other way around. And, you know, that's how you're going to, yeah, uh, you know, get through to people. I love that. That's good. That's good. Is, do you feel like you, uh, is, is that your leadership style? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say so. Um, you know, I'm not like a super loud, tough guy, you know, around my teammates or you yeah. know, yelling at them, doing too much. Um, you know, I think as a leader, uh, one thing I've learned, uh, Chase Daniel really, really told me this is, you know, every, every teammate, every person on your team needs to be led a different way. Right. Um, so as a quarterback, you know, you, you know, Luther Burden, you know, he needs to be, you know, talked to and like, you know, helped and, uh, led in a different way than maybe, um, you know, Cody Schrader, or Connor Tolleson, our center, yeah. someone like that. So I think just adjusting to your audience yeah. and knowing your teammates is like one of the biggest things for me. Yeah. What, what's uh what's coach drinks favorite quote do you, does he have any any great great quotes he says all the time oh man um I, he's got to have a lot of them i mean he's got to um, have a have a rolodex of quotes <laughs> yeah oh man i mean there's it's a ridiculous amount um we have uh we have this thing <laughs> in the quarterback room it's called the 11 commandments 11 quarterback commandments um and number 11 is don't be a celebrity quarterback and like he tells us this <laughs> all the time. So, like, he'll give me crap probably when he sees this podcast out. He'll be like, hey, what are you doing? Celebrity, <laughs> you know, celebrity quarterback, blah, 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 blah. You know, don't be a celebrity quarterback. Um, but, no, I mean, he, he loves coaching up the quarterbacks, and he's always giving us little things like that. So It's funny because, like, that – man, I, I was just talking to someone, like, even when I played, you know, when I was playing whatever, like, last year was 2017, like, not that long ago. Um, although it makes me feel old now that we're in 2023. If you, were, I remember, like, if I were to go tell Bill O'Brien I was going to start a podcast or do a podcast when I was playing, it, I, it wouldn't have happened, right? Like, it was like if you if you if you do that stuff, like you don't, yeah, like you don't love ball, right? You're not a ball guy if you if you want to do that. And now everyone has their own podcast. Everyone's right. about like content on social media. It, it's just, I, I don't know, it's just, it's just like things have changed so much. Like, I mean, you obviously see it every day. I'm sure you get hit up all the time to do media and social media. Now with NIL, like you got to build your brand. It's such a balance. Yeah, it, no, it is. And like, uh, drink knows that, but like, he just obviously wants the quarterbacks to know, like, you know, we can't yeah, have, focus. you know, yeah, we can't have you yeah. focus on, you know, your YouTube channel during the season. Right. So, uh, <laughs> you know, stuff yeah. like that. So, uh, last thing I got for you, I, I appreciate your time. I know you're busy in season. Um, I, I ask every, um, I, I end most podcasts with this question because I think it uh, unveils kind of a layer. Like, what, what's your why? What's the reason you do what you do? Yep. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I know I spoke on this a little bit, um, but my why is really my family, man. Um, yeah. It's really, really my family, specifically my two parents, just because I've seen, uh, I've seen what they've done for me along this football journey. I mean, starting literally in second grade tackle football, right? And you know, from second grade tackle yeah. football up until now. Um, it's been every single year, every single practice, every single game, making sure I had my, you know, equipment, you know, growing up and making sure I was here and with the right people around me. Um, you know, they've given me this opportunity. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just so grateful to them. So, um, you know, when things get hard, like last year or, um, stuff like that, like they're, they're my why, um, that's who I lean on. And, man, it's just been a lot of fun to see them, see them have fun this year. You know, I know they've had, you know, yep. one of the best, you know, one of the best six months probably of their lives. Honestly, it's been a lot of fun for our yep. family. Um, and they enjoy this stuff so much. So seeing that um, yep. makes me happy too. Awesome, man. Well, it's been, it's been fun to watch your success. I mean, uh, I know, uh, you know, I've been, I've heard a lot about you from Casey and Alyssa, you know, your, your agents and, and, uh, you know, I've heard a lot of great things about you. It's been fun to follow you from afar and to finally meet you and excited to see, you know, you, you ball out in the bowl game and, and the rest of your the rest of your football career. I have no doubt you'll be playing for a long time. So um, I appreciate you taking the time. Thanks, Adam. I really appreciate you having me on, man. Appreciate it, brother.